Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to This is the Police. I am your host, Kenny Eastlick. I have no idea if that's how you say it, but, uh... Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, <laughs> I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. Yeah, gangster. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make oh. an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. <laughs> My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! Yeah! <laughs> uh, probably have to put like a, you know... No idea how I got so barbaric. Like, I don't... I mean, it's not showing anything per se, but... I like the music. Day one. Uh, uh, uh... Roger, Sex Maniac, City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boy's resignation. Mark War II to be shown in free break day before worldwide premiere of the mayor's personal request. Come on, car start. There we go. Did my game break? When I was a kid, oh. my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. Man. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. Interesting. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. I hear wet shoe sounds. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. This voice sounds Not so because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Stab them. 
shutting my eyes as tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Hola. No sé, me has dado la suerte de que me Oh, ok. No, no, no. There we go. Yeah, stick it to the mayor. That guy. Okay. After a recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered you him a position, uh, wait, wait. wait. Uh, uh, <sighs> the are acquitted, so the police are corrupting, cooperating with the mafia. Uh, I say that. Professionally makes it safe to carefully no place for her jobs or her feelings. You're not welcome. How's the back today, Mr. Boy? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You Same as usual. <laughs> the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. smoking in the building. <sighs> Bang! As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Uh, he's not Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack! I was hoping I've never played golf. For the press conference. You, uh... You ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. <laughs> so it's a D bag. To scrape together a retirement fund. You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension, one that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. One hundred and eighty days quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. 
I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Of course. Okay then. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy <laughs> Star. Okay. Uh, how to go to Farmer's Villa in Italy. Jack Boyd believes feud with Mary that does recognition. I didn't say that. Jack Boyd was placed copy. I didn't say that either. The frick. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. That's disturbing. The main thing, don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. It needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Huh. <laughs> I really want to tell me how to do my job. Let's see. A PDR does not cover time. It's just to borrow every shift. Of response. Kind of progress. Station. So what? Oh, okay. I like the old timey music though, at least. Calls bread butter police work, your city officers are currently for time expires, MR. Just a call you rough. One testing in progress. The easiest way to determine technical test would be to share with you to hear that sound and call you. Huh. Uh. Medical books. Got the right level of homeless man. I've been digging through the trash can. Driver don't have help. He hit. He hit a bum. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know. Wee woo, wee woo. Uh, theater manager, poor D is, uh, show citizens can't, oh. Police officer. I'm liking the music. Oh no, it's raining. Uh, it was only police character don't know what it does. True, this sometimes the criminal managed to escape. Just shot over the dead cops. It's really the cops are here to rise here. This is the brother mayor. You're one of the ones.
let's enter the music over here. Good. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Did you hear the shotguns around the video? Oh. Send these two. Three eleven A in progress. Well, that's your guy's real cease files. Well, okay. We're gonna send that guy. Alright, cool, these two are back. <laughs> Can we send in the SWAT team for something? <laughs> Oh, jeez. So, some senior attack an elderly musician and rolling his guitar in his body. Oh, I. Uh. Oh, I could have sent three. Can I? I want to send in the SWAT team for something. Oh, I didn't think I kind of knew actually had the situation how to deal with whatever comes up later. The video in question is fractured. I said the brown residents sound. Oh. It's the police! I like the jazzy feel of this. Oh, jeez. Uh oh. Officer skate. Offender skate. Officers at harm. I can just end the day. You're gonna need a couple extra hands to borrow. You can order a cop to come in and work overtime because they work for that. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. I don't know what that means. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what you look like Stan Lee. What are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Yeah, Half fair a enough. million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but 
I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Who? Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. He's a Always Gatsby. wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake Ooh. his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission. And his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack. Please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Yeah. Day three. Brands, can't recognize his retirement day. Construction of Cinema Museum postman again. Legendary saying, er, Gennaro Crespo. Did I say that right? But that is all the time for ha I have <laughs> for this episode. So what that's it. Um. Oh, sorry, my head hurts. This has been. This is the police. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys around.